out here at the orchard. It's 26th of May and we're facing the first real threat of the year. These some um, chafers, the most unspeakable um, vermin, uh, hatch out of the grass. Uh, we believe these are ground chafers. There's a couple of them having it off. Um, uh, they hatch out of the grass, uh, fly up into the trees, um, bite holes in our apples, destroying them, uh, and then um, lay their filthy eggs. Um, we haven't worked out a really effective uh, policy. You know, I've read um, books. Um, you know, I've got a 75 quid, 75 pound book on uh, uh, pests and diseases. Only it's a very brief mention of these. Um, as far as I've been able to tell from all of um, all of the uh, uh, books I've read. Um, p people don't normally get the kind of problem that uh, we get with these chafers. Uh, these are small chafer beetles. Um, one bite from one of them uh, is enough to destroy uh, an apple. And as you can see, and here it's a windy day, there's the buzzard soaring on the thermals. Uh, we're really hoping uh, that there will be some um, uh, starlings. There tends to be a flock of starlings often turns up and eats these. Uh, we did find a spray that uh, kills them. I can't remember the name of it. Julia writes it all down, obviously. Um, uh, but this is really a plague. I think there are there is probably one of these for every apple in the orchard. And one of them can destroy several apples. Uh, I've seen a few apples already that have been destroyed. Um, and because of the very difficult weather on the blossom we've actually got quite a light set but we have at least as many chafers as always. I think there is probably uh, enough of these chafers here to uh, completely destroy the whole of our crop this year. As I mentioned this before, this is a good time to look for canker. Um, it's obviously needs to come out. I need to saw that. I'm not sawing right now. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, we're mowing the grass now, but we've got we've got two mowers. We're going to get both the mowers into action, and uh, hopefully, you know, where these these things hatch out of the ground, just running over the, the ground with the mowers, um, will possibly kill a certain number of them. Certainly more than I can uh, kill by just sort of finding and squashing them. Um, there is no organic control for these things. Um, uh, why we've got so many here, I don't know. Uh, it may well be a problem to do with monoculture, but I mean, I'm sorry, I don't know how else you can grow apples other than uh, by monoculture. <laughs> and uh, nobody we know of has, uh, has a problem like this. So, uh, yeah, anyway, well, we'll see. Um, anyhow, we're going to get mowing and um, just have a look at the weather report and hopefully... Uh, the wind may die down enough uh, to allow uh, me to spray, but I can't legally or safely spray uh, with this much wind going on. Even then, uh, it's not a knockdown dead spray, it's a spray that coats the little fruitlets, and um, then when they take a bite out of it, it kills them. Um, but usually not before they have destroyed a couple of apples. Uh, so, the uh, not for the for the first time for the first time this year, but probably not for the last. The entire crop hangs in the balance because of um, one of these horrible uh, vile pests, uh, which afflict fruit growers. As a result of which, we are driven to use pesticides. And these are um, main primary enemy at the moment. Uh, I don't know how well you can see, um, but they are uh, the grass hovering over the grass. Um, they hatch out on sunny days in um, late May and um, June. They fly up into um, apple trees and uh, take bites out of um, baby apples, thereby destroying them. And then they uh, mate and uh, lay eggs, which 
presumably pupate in the soil until um, something happens next year. They started building up, their numbers started building up about four years ago and each of the last four years we've had a, a real problem with them. Um, If anyone knows, if anyone's got any you know, practical, useful ideas, I'd be interested. Um, ideas that don't make sense to us would be um, to cover the whole of the earth in um, Holocene, uh, uh, or to um, uh, run chickens in the orchard to uh, eat them. I mean, that might work, um, but then we'd have to live out here and look after the chickens, there are foxes everywhere. Our neighbours keep chickens, and although they live on the land, um, they still have chickens regularly taken by foxes. And, uh, and um, you know, we don't have, don't have enough chickens to make a difference, we probably need a flock of about a thousand. And we'd basically need to completely reorganise the whole of our life uh, around those, which is, um, uh, is unreasonable. Um, catching and squashing them by hand. Uh, gives me a small amount of satisfaction. Uh, I suppose if we could get um, you know, two or three hundred people to come out here and spend all day catching them with nets and squashing them, that might help. Uh, <laughs> probably, um, I mean, we have got a pesticide that uh, if we have applied it to the apples immediately before these hatch out um, and then they take a bite out of the apple and it's, they take one bite and it's the last one because they die then um, you know that works but then it's a question of timing and getting it on at the right time yeah probably we just need to um, know, <laughs> cancel everything else that we're doing um, so that we can um, hit hard and fast um, but it's, it's very difficult when, you know, the weather is, um, uh, problematic. Um, I'm rambling a bit. There's another apple that's been, um, uh, bitten into. It's possible that the one next to it has been bitten as well. It's possible that they might survive. It'll never be marketable. Uh, um, yeah, reading all the books I've got on apple growing, um, ground shapers are hardly mentioned. Uh, we just seem, for whatever reason, of microclimate, of the surrounding vegetation, of maybe our soil, whatever, we've got a major pest. Anyway. This is something that really cheers me up. Um, it's, um, it's a dead... Chafer. Um, these trees were sprayed this morning. Uh, there were a lot of chafers around. They were congregating on the. They were congregating on the trees. I think you see that one still moving. So there's another. Um, they often get sort of stuck like that underneath the tree after they've um, uh, have been hit. And uh, there's another uh, sort of twitching a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's about um, ten of them I've found on this uh, just this one rather small tree. Um, and again, this is the sort of damage that they do. They hatch out, they fly up into the tree and bite bits out, um, and uh, that destroys the apple. Uh, the numbers of them that I saw today were such that um, I, I really thought, well, if we don't really hit these hard, we're going to um, lose our entire crop this year. And, um, uh, none of these apples are going to be eaten until until they've grown about about 50 times in size and. Uh, uh, about four months from now, what, what is it, it's the end of May, June, July, August, September, it's four months. Uh, they'll maybe get one, maybe two more sprays during that time, but if I hadn't hit them hard today, 
um, <coughs> then um, I must say it is very gratifying. Uh, there aren't many pests as big and obvious as, as a ground chafer. Um, but this morning these vermin were eating my apples and today they're uh, twitching their wretched lives away. Uh